Koken's Enteroscopy Colonoscopy Simulator is a practical training model for practicing the insertion technique for enteroscopy, shortening technique, and location recognition. The mobility of the intestinal models resembles that of a living body, providing a realistic simulation of enteroscope insertion. The Enteroscopy Colonoscopy Simulator has three major features. Feature 1. Insertion into the large and small intestine and the shortening technique can be practiced using each type of balloon enteroscope. This is an example of double balloon enteroscope insertion. This is an example of single balloon enteroscope insertion. Feature 2. The small intestine has an internal scale with intervals of 30 cm, allowing the user to confirm the length of enteroscope insertion. Feature 3. The small intestinal model can be selected to match the level of the trainee. A semi-difficult type or easy type can be selected. In the future, the level of difficulty of each intestinal model will be changeable. This model also can be used for practical training for colonoscopy insertion. With the development of balloon endoscopy, opportunities for performing enteroscopic examinations are increasing. Although balloon endoscopy is not an especially difficult procedure, there are differences with conventional endoscopic manipulations, and the operator needs to become familiar with device settings, manipulation methods, and insertion techniques. Using the Enteroscopy Colonoscopy Simulator, Operators can familiarize themselves with balloon endoscopy techniques and perform enteroscopic examinations with confidence. This explains how to apply lubricating jelly. Lubricating jelly is applied to four locations. Pull back the simulated peritoneal membrane sheet and remove all round stoppers. Use caution, as the tip may be damaged if the rubber straps are not removed one at a time. Remove the rubber straps from all of the holes in the transparent cover. Pass the small intestine under the hole in the intestine separator sheet. Remove the small intestine from the main body. 
Detach the connectors of each intestine in three locations. Put lubricating jelly on the sponge provided as an accessory. Be sure to put lubricating jelly on the sponge when applying the jelly to each part. Apply by inserting the sponge with lubricating jelly from the sigmoid colon side to near the rectum. Withdraw the sponge little by little while massaging the intestine, so that lubricating jelly is spread over the entire intestine. Insert the sponge with lubricating jelly from the anal side and massage the intestine well, so that the lubricating jelly is spread over the rectal area. Apply lubricating jelly to the descending colon. Insert the sponge with lubricating jelly and massage the intestine so that the lubricating jelly is spread over the entire intestine. Apply lubricating jelly to the transverse colon. Insert the sponge with lubricating jelly to the midpoint of the intestine and withdraw the sponge little by little while massaging the intestine so that lubricating jelly is spread over the entire intestine. Repeat the same procedure from the opposite side. Repeat application to the small intestine two to three times so that the lubricating jelly covers the entire intestine. Insert the sponge with lubricating jelly from the ascending colon while shortening the small intestine to allow the sponge to be advanced far into the small intestine. Insert the sponge all the way to the end of the small intestine. Shorten the intestine and withdraw the sponge little by little while massaging the intestine so that lubricating jelly is spread over the entire small intestine. Massage the intestine well so that lubricating jelly is spread over the inside of the ascending colon. This completes the application of lubricating jelly. Attach the connectors on each of the removed intestine sections. Align the male and female match marks when connecting two sections. Pass the first rubber strap through the hole in the transparent cover from the ascending colon and secure in place with the round stopper beyond the black part of the rubber strap. Cover with the intestine separator sheet. Pass the small intestine through the hole in the intestine separator sheet. Pass the small intestine from the ascending colon side up to near the first rubber strap. Pass the rubber strap of the intestine separator sheet through the hole in the transparent cover. Pull the rubber strap until there is no slack in the sheet and secure in place with round stoppers. Pass the second and third rubber straps from the ascending colon side through the hole in the transparent cover and secure in place with the round stopper. Pass the rubber straps one at a time through the hole in the transparent cover and round stopper. Pass the fourth and fifth rubber straps from the ascending colon side through the hole in the transparent cover and secure in place with the round stopper. Apply powder to the outside of each intestinal section. If an insufficient amount of powder is applied, the intestinal sections may rub against and stick to each other, interfering with insertion of the endoscope. Place the small intestine on the sheet so it is not twisted or tangled.
pass the round stopper through the hole in the simulated peritoneal membrane sheet. When securing the simulated peritoneal membrane sheet in place with hook and loop fasteners, pull the rubber straps of the intestine and align the positions of the round stoppers. This completes the application of lubricating jelly and assembly of the intestine. Wrap the belt under the table, insert it in the buckle, and pull tightly. When putting the simulator in the supine position, align the two pins on the stand with the holes in the underside of the main body. When putting the simulator in the lateral position, align the two pins on the stand with the holes in the side of the main body. The endoscope is put on a scope hanger and the overtube is passed into the scope. First, about 10 cc of water needs to be put into the overtube from the filling port for good sliding. Next, the scope balloon is attached using the scope balloon attachment tool. The attachment tool is inserted into a balloon. After removing moisture from the end of the scope, the mouth of the tool is widened, the balloon is inserted into the scope, and the tool is removed. Afterward, the balloon is moved to the proper fixation position and secured in place with the specially designated rubber piece. This can be done smoothly if the attachment tool is removed on the side closest to the user, as shown in the video, and the positions aligned. Attaching the fixation rubber requires a little getting used to. Attach the fixation rubber to the fixation rubber mounting device and remove the triangular pyramid. Later procedures will go more smoothly if the fixation rubber is twisted as shown in the video. After inserting the scope, remove the fixation rubber at the mounting position with the fixation rubber mounting device and attach a scope balloon. Using the same procedure, Mount the other fixation rubber. Finally, attach the scope balloon and air supply tube of the overtube. If a mistake is made in the attachment, the endoscope cannot be inserted, so care is needed to ensure proper attachment. After the balloon is mounted, pour another approximately 10 cc of water into the overtube. The preparation is then complete. Advance the scope into the rectum and sigmoid colon. As needed, move the fixation points with the SD flexure, splenic flexure, transverse colon, and hepatic flexure using the overtube balloon, and advance the scope and overtube to the ascending colon. Confirm the position of the ileocecal valve and advance the scope along the small intestine. Once beyond the ileocecal valve, advance the scope as far as possible into the small intestine. Inflate the scope balloon and hold the small intestine. After this, deflate the over two balloon and insert it to align with the scope. At this time, make sure that the over two balloon is sufficiently deflated. After inserting the over tube until its rear end is even with the scope mark, inflate the over two balloon and hold the intestine.
slowly pull both the scope and overtube to shorten the small intestine. Deflate the scope balloon and advance the scope further. As necessary, repeat the series of insertion maneuvers and advance the scope and overtube deep into the small intestine. Advance the scope to the rectum and sigmoid colon. As needed, move the fixation points with the XD flexure, splenic flexure, transverse colon, and hepatic flexure using the sliding tube balloon, and advance the scope and sliding tube to the ascending colon. Confirm the position of the ileocecal valve and advance the scope along the small intestine. Once beyond the ileocecal valve, advance the scope as far as possible into the small intestine. Deflate the sliding tube balloon and insert the sliding tube while checking the monitor so that the scope does not come out. At this time, check to make sure that the sliding tube balloon is sufficiently deflated. Inflate the sliding tube balloon and hold the small intestine. Afterward, slowly pull both the scope and sliding tube and shorten the small intestine. After sufficiently shortening the small intestine, advance the scope further. When the sliding tube is inserted deep into the small intestine, the scope sometimes comes out. This can be prevented by angling the scope. As necessary, repeat the series of insertion maneuvers and advance the scope and sliding tube deep into the small intestine.